XAI already has two giant data centers powering its AI operations, and a new exclusive story from my colleague Theo Waite reveals that the company is planning a third giant facility as it continues to pursue a markedly different strategy than other top AI model companies. I want to bring on Theo to tell us more about what he's learned. Theo, welcome back to the show. It's great to have you here. Good to be back. So what do we know about this third data center? Uh, it's currently a warehouse with a bunch of trucks in front of it, but <laughs> that's like every data center though, man. Come on. <laughs> well, no, actually, because some of them, they have to build from the ground up and right. XAI right. Is, is going in and, and buying these other, you know, facilities that are built for other things and converting them. Um, but yeah, it's huge. It's 810,000 square feet and it's right next to another huge XAI data center that is still under construction as well. And what's the name of this third facility? Um, well. After our story came out, Elon uh, tweeted about it and confirmed the story and said it was called Macro Harder. Um, XAI's second data center that it's close to is, is called Macro Hard, um, which is a term that kind of started out as Elon uh, making a joke about Microsoft's name. Um, you know, a, a childish joke, uh, as, as you could probably tell, uh, but th now it's actually a serious thing and it's, it's what he's calling XAI's attempts to, um, you know, build software with AI. Let me ask you something. What does it feel like as a reporter when Elon Musk confirms your story on Twitter? I mean, you see that tweet, what, what, what's going through your mind? Um, I mean, it was cool. Like, you know, it doesn't happen that much because, you know, I reach out to this company for comment and they have an auto responder for every journalist that says legacy media lies. Um, it used to be, uh, I, I don't know if we count as legacy media though. I guess not. Cause we didn't lie <laughs> in this case, but, um, it used to be a poop emoji, uh, before that. So, you know, generally there's this very confrontational attitude toward reporters and, that they have. And so when I see uh, them acknowledge that something we reported is correct, it's it's rare and, and you know, I appreciate it. And I should say it happened pretty quickly too. I mean, this was minutes after your story was released. I mean, you know, clearly he, clearly he's reading is, is, is the point that I'm making. So I, I um, hope he, I hope he read our story and didn't just see a tweet about it. I hope. No, I, I think he read the story. That's, that's <laughs> the timing is too, is, is too, uh, too perfect. Um, okay. So, you know, one of the things you talk about in your story is the differing strategy here that XAI is taking compared to other fast-growing model companies like OpenAI and Anthropic. Talk a little bit about why they are moving to build their own data centers and basically from the ground up, whereas other AI companies, and I'm not talking about, you know, the, the hyperscalers, the cloud companies that obviously have data centers for other purposes or meta for that matter, but, you know, OpenAI and Anthropic, I mean, they seem to be uh, working with a lot of partners to to do this, right? It's a, it's a bit of a different approach. Yeah, we we you know have all these names: Crusoe, Coreweave, like Oracle. You know, all, all these companies that we associate with with OpenAI that you know do different things, but ultimately are kind of part of their uh, mission of of getting is compute online. And then you know, there's also Amazon building a data center for Anthropic. You know, there, there's all kinds of these deals going on. And, you know, XAI is not entirely independent, but is definitely more independent than these, these other companies. I mean, they are going in and, you know, buying properties and developing themselves or you know, renting and buying properties and developing them themselves. Um, and, you know, that means they can be kind of aggressive and, and, you know, like brash sometimes in a way that other companies wouldn't be comfortable doing. I mean, like putting the data centers where they are in, in Memphis, you know, is a bold move in itself. Like companies don't usually build data centers in cities that have a million people in them. Um, you know, Meta's biggest data center project is in a part of Louisiana that's extremely rural and there aren't like even hotels for construction workers building it to stay in. So building, you know, in a city has given XAI access to a lot of infrastructure. It's let them find you know, existing buildings like warehouses and factories that they can transform into data centers and, you know, get online faster, but it's also kind of exposed them to a lot of scrutiny and, and opposition. Um, so you know, this, so th th this is, this seems to be sort of part of, you know, Elon Musk's way of operating, which is that he wants to have more control over more things, essentially. He doesn't want to leave anything to somebody else, you know, where he might not have 
as much say over the timeliners or, or something like that. Right. I mean, you know, I was, I was, at, I was like, you know, outside the site the other day and you could see there were tons of people working between Christmas and New Year's. And, you know, I just, I don't think Elon trusts that if you hire someone else to do that, they're really going to be out there uh, 24 seven on, on that kind of schedule. You know, right. I, I think he feels better having it in house. Now, let, let me ask you one more question here. These data centers that XAI, there's two of them and now there's a third. Do we know, are these only going to be for XAI's operations? Does Elon have sort of a broader agenda here in using these for his other companies or maybe companies outside of his empire too? You know, I, I think theoretically, uh, yeah, they, they could be used for Tesla or SpaceX and, and you know, both Tesla and SpaceX are... Uh, you know, integrating some XAI services into their products. Um, but, you know, for now, it's it's pretty much all uh, to develop the the latest Croc models, as, as far as I know. Great. Well, Theo, I want to thank you for coming on. That is Theo Waite, our Elon Musk reporter here at The Information.